Before we begin, if you care about serious evidence-based history and practical survival knowledge that still works today, subscribe to The Prepper Historian now and share this channel with someone who values real lessons from the past. What you're about to hear isn't trivia. It's one of the most effective cold-weather housing systems ever built, quietly removed from later manuals because it didn't fit modern narratives of progress. What most people think they know about Viking homes is wrong. The popular image is a smoky wooden longhouse, drafty, cold, barely tolerable through winter. That image survives because it's easy to visualize and easy to teach. What doesn't get taught is that in the harshest climates of Scandinavia, Iceland and Greenland, many Norse families lived in earth-sheltered homes so thermally stable that fuel consumption dropped dramatically, interior temperatures stayed livable through brutal winters, and the designs barely changed for centuries because they worked too well. Why the introduction of this topic matters more than most people realize. The Viking Age coincided with extreme climatic instability, including the late antique Little Ice Age and later cooling phases. Survival wasn't optional, and building mistakes meant death. The earth-sheltered home was not a fallback solution for the poor. It was a deliberate response to wind, cold, and fuel scarcity. Understanding this forces us to rethink both Viking engineering intelligence and how modern societies abandon passive survival architecture in favor of fuel-dependent systems. How Viking earth-sheltered houses actually worked instead of how they're described. These homes were partially or fully dug into the ground often set into hillsides or carved into turf-rich soil. Thick sod walls, sometimes over a metre deep, were layered with grass facing outward so roots knit the structure together. Timber was used sparingly and strategically, mainly for roof supports. The roof itself was sealed with birch bark for waterproofing and topped with more turf. Earth wasn't decoration. It was insulation, wind protection, and thermal mass all at once. Why these homes stayed warm when wooden houses failed? Soil maintains a relatively stable temperature year-round. By sinking the living space into the ground, Vikings reduced exposure to wind chill and eliminated most heat-loss surfaces. A small hearth could warm the interior because heat wasn't immediately stripped away by freezing air. Smoke management was crude but functional, and while air quality wasn't perfect, the trade-off was survival. Some archaeological sites show interior winter temperatures staying well above freezing, even when outside conditions were lethal. Why later manuals quietly stopped mentioning these structures. By the late medieval and early modern periods, timber became more available in certain regions. Centralized states pushed standardized building practices and written manuals favored techniques that supported taxable materials and visible structures. Earth-sheltered homes blurred property lines, required local soil knowledge, and didn't fit standardized measurements. They were harder to regulate and harder to monetize. Over time, they were labeled primitive, despite outperforming newer designs in energy efficiency. What archaeology reveals that written history avoided? Excavations in Iceland, Greenland, and Norway consistently show long-term occupation of turf houses with incremental improvements rather than abandonment. Doorways were deliberately small to trap heat. Floors were slightly sunken 
to reduce drafts. Storage rooms were placed deeper into the earth, where temperatures remained constant, preventing food spoilage. So, how can modern survivalists actually put this knowledge to use, you might wonder? Well, the principle here isn't about copying the Viking Age structure exactly, but rather it's about copying the underlying logic. Things like building into the earth, using soil as insulation, minimizing the amount of exposed surface area, and really prioritizing thermal mass, these can all be applied even on quite a small scale today. For example, a modern prepper could earth berm just one side of a structure, use compacted soil up against exterior walls, or even build a root cellar that doubles as a winter shelter. And honestly, even partial earth sheltering can cut your heating needs dramatically. It's a practical, step-by-step -step way to bring Viking logic into the present day. So, why does this knowledge matter more now than it did back then? Well, Vikings built these homes because fuel was precious, and let's face it, winters were absolutely unforgiving. These days, though, our dependence on fuel actually creates vulnerability, not comfort. Earth shelter design reduces our reliance on external energy, lowers visibility, and, yeah, increases resilience. That's exactly why this idea resonates with both historians and survivalists. It's not just nostalgia. It's proven engineering that frankly outlived empires. And it really shows us something about Viking intelligence, and perhaps a bit about modern arrogance, too. You know, the whole idea that history moves in a straight line toward improvement just sort of collapses when you study these homes honestly. Vikings didn't lack knowledge. They just prioritized outcomes over appearances. Warmth, durability and survival mattered a whole lot more than aesthetics or status. Modern societies, on the other hand, often reverse that equation. And then, well, wonder why systems fail under stress. If this kind of forgotten practical history matters to you, go ahead and subscribe to The Prepper Historian and share this video with someone who still thinks ancient people were, you know, primitive. Let's keep these lessons alive, because some of the smartest survival strategies ever built are already behind us just waiting to be remembered.